Today I want to talk about Pete Kwiatkowski and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about Pete Kwiatkowski, who is going to accept the new defensive coordinator position left vacant by one Chris Ash and designated by one Steve Sarkeesian, who, as you might know, was once head coach at the University of Washington, where Kwiatkowski is coming from. Can you tell that I practice? And you know what? I'm going to have to because Pete Kwiatkowski's defenses alongside Jimmy Lake have been nothing short of outstanding. My first clue to this is the Washington Huskies would dominate the Washington State Cougars in the Apple Cup during the Mike Leach era. Just beat them like he stole something. And that Offense, the air raid, is the one that I'm most familiar with and I know the ins and outs of the most because it was the one that captivated my imagination growing up and the one that I would still run with in NCAA 14 because I love it that much. But what P Kwiatkowski and Jimmy Lake had done with, against that defense just raised the hair on my arms because I just hadn't seen it done in such a traditional manner, right? Year after year, the way that those guys had done it. Jimmy Lake assumes the head coaching job left vacant by Chris Peterson. Kwiatkowski gets elevated to the defensive coordinator job after being the co-defensive coordinator. But he's a part of a defense that put together some of the best scoring defenses of the last five years and tremendous NFL talent on that side of the ball. I think like 17 players on that side of the ball have been drafted in the last four years. They include dudes like Buda Baker and Taylor Rapp and Byron Murphy and Vita Vea. And those dudes have been monsters. As a matter of fact, if you score more than 35 points on the Washington Huskies, keep the ball because they haven't given up more than 35 points to an opponent since 2014 when Peterson and them came over from Boise State. Like, that's how ridiculous Kwiatkowski and Lake's defenses have been. It's also one of the dudes that a lot of people didn't think was going to leave the Pacific Northwest. I mean, he had... Been at Boise State, he'd been in Seattle for so long, and he's about Urban Meyer's age at 55, right? So he's been doing this for a very long time. I think of him the way the old heads talk about Bud Foster. I thought he was just going to be at Washington forever, and he was making very good money at about $1.1 million to coordinate a defense, but Texas has deeper pockets. You also know what the challenge is in the Big 12, and that's what I think this mostly speaks to, because now we're looking at a Big 12 that is going to feature defensive coordinators not just Pete Kwiatkowski, but John Haycock at Iowa State, Jim Knowles at Oklahoma State, Alex Grinch at Oklahoma, head coach Dave Aranda at Baylor, head coach Gary Patterson at Texas Christian. People are tired of getting lit up by these Lincoln Riley offenses, by the Matt Campbell offenses, as it were. And when those defense coordinators and defensive minded head coaches can match themselves with outstanding offensive play, they've been legitimate national title contenders. Think about TCU. In 2014, right? Think about Baylor with Matt Rule having, you know, Charlie Brewer throwing some darts. But what he had was an outstanding defense that just went after people. Oklahoma State continued to get better, dropping Malcolm Rodriguez down from the safety spot to the linebacker spot. Colby Harwell Peel was one of my favorite dudes playing defensive back going into this season. They had a Paycom Jim Thorpe Award finalist a couple years ago. And we all know what it is with Gary Patterson. To go to Gary Patterson to play defense means that you got a 1-11 shot, probably a 2-11 shot, of being drafted out of that class. Because that's how good he has been at developing players. And John Hay Haycock got two of the best defenders in college football for me returning next year. Mike Rose, who I think with another great season as a fringe Heisman finalist, the way that Manti Teo was a fringe Heisman finalist, had 96 tackles and five interceptions from the middle linebacker spot. And then there's Will McDonald, the fourth on edge with 10 and a half sacks. Nobody was talking about that dude at all last year, right? I get that Ronnie Perkins was getting a lot of buzz because he played at Oklahoma, but Will McDonald, Vernon Broughton down at Texas, Alfred Collins down at Texas, those dudes are next. And when I know that a guy like Pete Kwiatkowski is going to be coordinating defense, you can see easily how Steve Sarkeesian just doesn't have to worry anymore about the defense. And that's what I think it takes 
to be a head coach who is an offensive play caller. You got to be able to designate a defensive coordinator and leave him alone. You can't be in his sauce at all because you're already in yours. Another way I think this works is with Mike Elko and Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher doesn't do much at all with the defense. He lets Mike Elko go do that, right? That's the way it's got to work if it's going to work. If you're going to go win national championships with a play caller, offensive coordinator, head coach. And that's what I think Steve Sarkeesian is trying to set himself up to do because it's a really difficult ask. The guys that are winning national championships here lately include Ed Orgeron, Nick Saban, Dabo Sweeney, right? They don't hold a play card. They hire people to do that, right? Ryan Day gets in that mix, but he hasn't won a national championship. He's won everything but, right, so far with just two losses in two years, and he's going to have time to add his name to this narrative alongside like a Jimbo Fisher as a play caller or offensive coordinator head coach. But getting Kwiatkowski from Washington is a tremendous coup for me. And I think Texas fans should be very excited about this. Like, I didn't expect this. I thought that Pete Golding or Will Muschamps or just going to the SEC well in general was what Steve Sarkeesian was going to do. But after you get turned down by a Dan Lanning at Georgia – and you see that there's a train hold up with Pete Golding as defense coordinator at Alabama. You're not really looking to bring Tosh Lapoy into Texas, although Tosh Lapoy has done nothing but move and, and hire a U-Haul truck these last few years. I really am enthusiastic about this because the players that you're going to be able to get at Texas, no disrespect to the Huskies, are not the players that you're going to get at Washington. And to see the output that those guys have performed over the last five years is amazing. Like I said, I went through the schedule and I saw they gave up 35 points maybe three times in the last five years, but having not given up more than 35 in this age of offensive football is remarkable to me. Now, maybe that's Pac-12 competition. We'll find out, right? But they won the Pac-12 North Division last year, right? That division had an up-and-coming Oregon State. A very good Oregon ends up winning the Pac-12 championship, right? They've competed with some of the best offenses. I mean, west of the Mississippi for sure. But can he take that even further east and win with it? Because Arizona State ain't Oklahoma, right? USC ain't Oklahoma. You get what I'm saying there? UCLA ain't Oklahoma. And for that matter, Texas Tech, who went back to the well of air raid and brought in Sonny Cumbie to be their offense coordinator. This is about to be a popping league, right, when it comes to defense. We're about to find out if the Big 12 can sharpen itself to put a, tra a champion, a true champion, as they say, in front of the rest of us to compete in a college football playoff spot and not get embarrassed, but also win, right? Because that's what we're looking for here. And I think bringing a Pete Kwiatkowski in is going to help facilitate that. I'm excited to see what his defense looks like up close. I'm excited to see what Steve Sarkeesian he planned to do. I'm excited to see his player evaluations because if he's as good as I think he's going to be, he is going to be a force to reckon with in this league. A hire for me. Good job. Texas fans, what you got in the comments below? Deuces.